Hey guys, welcome to JPT. I'm Carson G, and this is Just Plain Tech. So you just got a new Linux Mint installation. Wait, before you do anything, there are a few things we need to set up and configure before you can start using your computer. Now, it's not that much, and this video will be pretty short. Alright, so this is the first boot of a fresh Linux Mint install. Now, as you can obviously see right here, we've got a welcome screen. So we're just gonna take a look at first steps here. Obviously, we got desktop colors. We can change our desktop to look however we want it. Red, blue. It comes green and that's personally my favorite color so I'm just going to keep it as green there we go but I do like the dark mode so I'm gonna switch on the dark mode like that and as far as panel layout I prefer modern although you can do traditional if you would like but I kind of like it how it is so right here we have system snapshots so we're gonna click launch now this is an optional step I'm just gonna click next I would recommend doing it it's really only useful if you're updating to a newer version of Linux Mint and something goes horribly wrong you can just revert back to the previous snapshot that you had of your Linux Mint system and then everything will be fine of course, if you don't have a lot of space, you don't need to do this, but I have a whopping two terabytes on here on this computer, so I'm totally fine with doing it because I'm never going to get close to filling up that space. Um, just click next. Five daily snapshots. Personally, I don't want to do that. I would probably do a monthly and keep two monthly snapshots. I'm probably just gonna keep it at that. If you download a ton of files, it's not gonna back up that. That would take up a lot of space, which is, I think it's a good idea that it's not backing that up. It's just backing up the operating system, which is really all we need it to back up, just in case. So I'll just go ahead and click next. Setup is complete, and I'll just click finish. All right, there we go. So, Time shift is the app where you can go to manage these, I guess. So just close that out. The driver manager. So this is very useful, especially if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. So most of the drivers are already pre-installed in the kernel and you probably won't have to install anything additional. But if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can use this app to get your driver up and loaded. But obviously I don't have any additional drivers that I need, so if you do have a driver that you need to install it will detect it and it will help you to install it right here so super quick and simple so this right here is just configuring the system this is installing applications and that's a firewall in case you need it so we're gonna go to the update manager let's click OK it's pretty straightforward so <laughs> right out of the gate there's a new version of the update manager so we're just gonna click apply the update right here says do you want to switch to a local mirror as far as that goes you can if you want I just stay on packages.linuxmint.com because it's always reliable and other mirrors while they may be just a teensy bit faster sometimes they could be down so it's better in my opinion just to stick with packages.linuxmint.com so I'm gonna click no I'm just gonna stick with the mirror we already have so here we've got all these updates that we have to install. So we're just gonna click install updates. All right, once you rebooted and everything is up to date, there's only one thing left to do. You're gonna see this little clipboard with an exclamation mark down here. You're just gonna wanna click that. And it said there are some system problems which require your attention. It kind of exaggerates it a little bit. It's usually some stupid little thing that's like super easy to fix. So it kind of is dramatic when it puts it down here and says it's a problem because it's not really a problem. It's just 
some. See like right here. The localization packages are missing to properly support your language for LibreOffice apparently. So it's usually just the click of a button. You just click install the language packs. You might have a few more things to do here, but they're all pretty much just clicking a button and probably entering your password so it can do something. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please make sure to subscribe if you would like more Linux tips, and we'll see you next time.